Hey everybody, it's James from Wooden Classroom here and in this video I'm going to show you two methods for making artist charcoal from willow sticks. It's really simple, it's an easy fun project to do whether you just want to do it on your own for your own interest to get some free drawing charcoal or you want to do it with something like a forest school project, it works really well. Before we get into the methods themselves, let's just understand what we're doing here. What is charcoal? Well essentially it's carbon, it's the carbon that's left over from the burning process. And when we're making charcoal, we are doing a process called pyrolysis. We're burning, but excluding the oxygen. So we're removing all the impurities and all the water from the wood just to leave the pure carbon. It's that that makes the excellent drawing charcoal or the charcoal we use for barbecues. Before we get burning the charcoal ourselves, we need to know what are we gonna harvest? What are the best woods to use to make artist charcoal? Well, for that property where you wanna get a good drawing stick, willow works very well, that's what we're gonna use. Spindle makes excellent charcoal, if you know where to get it, but also oak and grapevine. I've never used it myself, but by all accounts, it's very good. Whichever of these two methods you decide to use, the preparation of the sticks to bake into charcoal is the same. The size of your charcoal sticks is going to be dictated by the size of your tin, of course, and you want to cut the sticks so they're just short of the size of the tins. So they fit in really snugly, like matchsticks in a box there. Nice and snug is what you want, so you get as much in there as possible. Having a nice even stick size also makes a good even product. I tend to cut one to size and then match them all off that one so I know they're all going to fit in the tin there. The other thing you need to do is to take the bark off the charcoal. That's really important because bark doesn't make good charcoal, it's just the wood underneath that you want. If you're using willow, stripping the bark off with either vegetable peelers or a knife is a great project to do with kids to get them really involved in the whole uh, preparing of the sticks there. The last tip is to make sure you use the same species of wood in your charcoal tin and also it's either all green or all dry because if you use, let's say you use all willow in there, but you use some sticks you've just cut today and with the bark stripped off and then some you've had hanging around for a year, they're not gonna bake at the same rate. Some are gonna, you know, just maybe turn to dust while the other ones haven't gone far enough to charcoal. So making sure they've all got the same moisture content in them means you're gonna get a nice even burn of your charcoal sticks. Okay, let's get into method one. And this is the method that we use mostly on forest school sessions with groups of kids. Um, you use a tin like this, this is an old golden syrup tin, but an old coffee tin would work well as well of course, just make sure it's nice and clean inside. This has already had a couple of burns to its name, but what's important is that the lid is in good condition and you can seal it down well, because what you're effectively making with your tin is an oven. Now the oven isn't completely airtight, you can see we've got a hole here, that's important because you need somewhere for the water vapour and the other impurities to escape, otherwise the lid is gonna burst off and you're gonna have a little explosion, which would be a lot of fun around the campfire for the kids, but not entirely safe. So we need that hole, that's important. If you wanna make a hole in the lid, what I suggest you do is take the lid off, put it against something flat and solid like a block of wood, and then bang a hole through with a nail. That way, if it's against the wood, the lid isn't gonna become distorted, because again, it wants to go back on as a good fit. That's important to make that mini oven. Next, it's time to pack the tin with as many sticks as you can fit in. And once they're all fitting in snugly, making sure none of them are proud, push that lid back on and make a good seal. This is now gonna go in the middle of your campfire with the hole pointing up. It's important that that has uh, the ability for everything to escape from it. And you wanna put it in the campfire where you can see what's going on as well. You don't want a raging campfire where all the flames are going right over it into the middle, just sitting nicely in the campfire or on the edge of it, so it's building up its heat. As this heats up inside, you're gonna see a few things happen. You're gonna see a lot of white water vapor escape from this hole to start with. That's the first thing that happens in the baking process as the water vapor is drawn off. Once that's done, you're gonna get a little jet of flame come out of the hole here, and that's all of the impurities being burned off from the charcoal. When that's finished, you should see nothing, and that's the point where you need to take it out of the fire. Of course, it's gonna be very hot, so do that with care. Next, you're going to want to plug the hole 
with something. You could use a stone. I like to whittle a little stick and just pop it in there so it's a nice tight fit. That means that the oxygen getting in there isn't going to ignite um, any of the charcoal that's in there and set it aflame, which is of course not what we want. We'll end up with nothing inside. So we want it to cool down slowly, but be um, denied the oxygen, that's important. One thing that's important to mention though, if you are just having a little tin in the fire, is to turn it halfway through. If it's not in the center of the fire, if it's at the edge, remember it's only gonna get hot on one side. So halfway through your bake, you're gonna to wanna to turn it round so you get a more even burn throughout. That's really important. How long do you bake it for though? That's a pretty good question. And it's a question I can't answer for you because it depends on several factors. How big is your tin? How big is your campfire? Is the wood very green and fresh that's gone in? Or is it all seasoned? Or how thick is the wood? And um, really, for the sticks, you want kind of little finger thickness, nothing thicker than that. That's fine for charcoal. But it's gonna take anywhere between kind of 30 to 45 minutes probably to bake but it can depend on a lot of factors. It's something you're just gonna have to play with and get used to. But look for those stages. First, all the steam, the water vapor, then that jet of flame, and then nothing. That's the point when it's ready to be sealed and taken out the fire. Now, when you take it out of the fire, you need to leave it to fully cool. That's important. If you open it up, it could reignite again. And also, everything's gonna be very hot. So let it cool, maybe for an hour, sometimes overnight, if you're not desperate for time and open it up and see what you've got. If it's not fully burned and fully turned to charcoal, seal it back up and put it back in the fire again for a bit. That's fine. Let's talk about method number two, and this is the way we make artist charcoal when running our outdoor courses on making your own barbecue charcoal in a 45 gallon oil drum. There's a link to that video, hopefully here, where you can see that method or in the description below, so do check that out if you wanna know how to make your own barbecue charcoal. But this is how you get an extra little um, supply of artist charcoal at the same time out of the same burn. Basically, as you're filling up your drum, your kiln with wood for your barbecue charcoal, somewhere in there, you wanna place your tin of artist charcoal sticks to go in the same burn. The only difference here I'd say is maybe make sure there's some wire around the tin as well as having the good seal on the lid because it's gonna get knocked around a bit and you definitely don't want that to fall open and lose all your artist charcoal. So we tend to give it an extra bit of seal, a bit of belt and braces with some wire around the tin there. Once that tin's inside the kiln, you keep filling up the rest of the kiln with your wood and then follow the process as I've described in our other video for making barbecue charcoal. When that's cooled and cooled overnight and you open up the kiln, you'll find the tin in there and hopefully you should open it up and have some lovely artist charcoal in there as an extra little uh, piece to take away from your barbecue charcoal burn. Now you've got your artist charcoal, you can have a lot of fun with it, using it for any art projects. With the kids in our forest school, we like to use it sometimes for Stone Age inspired artworks. The kids will start drawing on rocks, on logs, and making their own kind of cave paintings, or their own marks and secret trails and way markers through the woods. So of course, those charcoal sticks can be used for all kinds of games going forward. But it's really nice for anyone involved in it, whether it's kids or adults, to see the process of how charcoal is made and that you get something that really is good quality and can work very well as a drawing stick. Before I disappear though, let's just take the idea of charring materials, natural materials, a little bit further. Anyone who practices bushcraft will be familiar with char cloth, which is made from natural fibers such as cotton, wool, or linen. Uh, Man-made fibers don't work, polyester and things like that, it doesn't work. You need to use all 100% natural. And char cloth is used for traditional fire lighting, such as fire lighting with flint and steel. You can make your own char cloth using the same method having a tin and filling it up full of cloth and doing that same baking method we described earlier. But what about making other tinders and having a play with other natural materials? I've got some in my bag here. Things like punk wood or birch polypore fungus or other bracket fungus or mushrooms you find in the woods. Can they be charred? Can the moisture and impurities be driven out of them? Will that leave some good carbon left that can be used for fire lighting? It's a really fun thing to play with, so don't just think that charring is limited to artist charcoal or char cloth. Play around with different natural materials and see what quality tinders you can make. Well, I hope you found that useful and I'd really love to hear in the comments below if you had success making willow charcoal with either of these methods. Do let me know how you get on. And if you like this video, there's more good stuff, of course, on our channel. 
so do please subscribe and give the video a like. And lastly, we do run courses in North East Wales on bushcraft, wild food foraging, all kinds of good woodsy stuff. So do check out the website woodlandclassroom.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.